everyone, Keith here again. We're here for lesson 19 in our 30 songs in 30 days lesson series. Today, we're gonna focus, of course, on this song. It's called Kiss a Girl. It's from my album, Define Gravity. We're gonna be back in standard tuning today. So if you haven't retuned from the open G that we were using in the last lesson, here's your E. Let me give you the rest of the strings, just to be sure we're in sync. D. G. B. and E. Okay, we ready? Okay, Kiss a Girl is a really cool little intro lick, a verse, a pre-chorus, a chorus, a bridge, and an outro. So let's run through them. Okay, let's start with the intro. The intro is kind of loosely based around the chords of D, A, and G. As in, if you were humming the intro, we just You can loosely play those chords. The A is a bit iffy, but you can loosely play those chords around that riff. Now, I play them in a slightly modified way, which allows me to throw some additional notes in there. I play it like this, which is a sort of a strange, version of a D bar chord, which D bar chord would be here, or this finger, either one. And I play it using this finger and these two, and I leave these strings muted, so you don't really hear them. And I predominantly strum in the center of these strings, right there. The reason I'm playing this version is so my pinky is free to do the... See, it's going to slide up to there. And then... <laughs> That's how I play it. There's a lot of ways to play this which get simpler and simpler. You can play it down here, open. <laughs> and they're all pretty much saying the same thing. You can even play it a little bit like put you in a song where you're only using two strings. You open D and you're playing on the G string up here on this fret and you're playing just the two strings together all the time, like this. Check this out. <laughs> That's probably the easiest way to play it as far as the amount of strings that are being used. I also want to point out quickly, um, you'll notice the strumming pattern is kind of important too. Um, the muting palm muting comes back in. It's kind of part of the sound. If you were to just strum the intro, even the way I play it down here, it would be like this. Which is fine, but it doesn't have the same feel as palm muting it, which gives you. bit important for the sound, not crucial, but it does make a little difference. Okay, there's a couple of ways we can approach the chords in the verse. And the reason why I say that is because if you're playing on your own, you've got your guitar, you're sitting at home, you've learned D, A and G, they're going to work fine for the verses, like... To kiss and tell, it's just not my style. 
then eight beats on G. But the night is young and it's been wild. She broke my heart, broke it right in two, and it took some time. But I'm feeling like I'm. That works fine. Um, on the record and when we play it in the band, part of what makes it work in a band setting is the bass note here is there for every chord. D, it's there for A, and it's there for G. So it's there the whole time. And with that playing through, it gives a slightly different feel, which would be like, to kiss and tell, it's just not my style, but the night is young, and it's been a while, she broke my heart. Broke it right in two, and it took some time, but I'm feeling like I'm... So either one is going to work fine. The simple chords are going to work just fine. If you want to get to playing that, that's going to work too. So we get to the pre-chorus, and that's the bit where it goes, But I'm feeling like I'm... Which is A. Finally ready to... Say goodbye to G, to all these blues. And then we're into the chorus. Right before we get to the chorus, I just want to recap on one thing to do with the verse. And we talked about whether you could play these chords over the verse, or if you wanted to play that. The reason why it's kind of cool if you can play these over chords, which is what they are, where the bass is staying on D. The reason why that's cool is because when you really look at this song, the verse chords and the chorus chords are the same. So if you do that, you can release into the chorus by using these D, A, G chords. Then they're free to be G, A, D, and they sound more powerful. Four beats on D. One, two, three, four. Four beats on A, three, four, eight beats on G, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the second part of the chorus is D for four beats, A for four beats, B minor for four beats, G four beats, and then A, one, two, three, four, E minor, two, three, four. And then you're back into the intro riff again. Now. At the very end of the chorus, on that second part of the cycle, there's another little arpeggio thing. You don't have to do it, but it would sound like this. Second half of the chorus. Don't wanna go too far, just to take it slow. Shouldn't be lonely. Three, three, four, one. <laughs> you don't have to play that, but if you can get your head around that, you'll impress all your friends. And it's like this. It's, you're playing an A chord, and it's basically. So it's just a descending pattern. And it takes us down to that E minus seven. So. Okay, that takes us to the bridge of the song. Now, the bridge in this is either really simple or a bit more complex, depending on how you want to play it. At its heart, it's really just G, A, G, A. It just keeps repeating that through the whole section of this bridge, taking us up to the solo. But what you'll notice when you listen to the record is this is one of those examples where you're hearing over chords, meaning there's a chord happening. And the bass is going. I'm the bass player. This is all I can do. 
<laughs> but if the bass player is playing that and I'm playing... That's actually what's happening when you're hearing the bridge of the song. So the question is, how do we play that on our own to make it sound as close as we can to the record? There's a few ways to do it. You got your G. You could play A, which is the next chord. And if you do it this way, you can probably leave your finger on the bass string of G, like this. Now add an A, but keep your bass finger right there, like this. You're getting very close now to the sound of those over chords. So, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's such a cool chord right there. It's better than this. Two, three, four, one, two, because it's not really what the bridge is. This is it. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And you can just go backward and forward. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's probably the easiest way for you to play it and make it sound full like it does on the album. So it's this. Maybe tonight could turn into the rest of our lives. Oh yeah. Are you ready? Are you ready? And then this last part goes to cross that line. Then you put the full A on. And your lips are mine. That's where you want to play the full A. It's the only time you want to hit that big A. And the reason is we're about to go into the solo. So we're building up. Yahoo, big solo, like that. The solo is pretty straight ahead. It's D, A, and G, and you're talking four beats on D, four beats on A, eight beats on G. Same thing again. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and then eight. And then we're at the next section of the song. Okay, after the solo, that's going to take us up to a return of this pre-chorus section, which is that, do you want to try? So one on A, four beats. One, two, three, four, G. One, two, three, four, A. One, two, three, four, G. Two, three, four. Now, if you want to be right on the money for this one, this little bit before this part of the chorus does a, a slight twist on what we did earlier. And here it is. And it's quick little changes between A and G, like this. <laughs> Pretty quick. So, pre chorus. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, here we go. If you want to add that in, you can do it. If not, the other way, like you did earlier, is going to work as well. Then we're at the chorus, the breakdown chorus is what they call it. I want to kiss a girl, I want to hold her tight, maybe make a little magic, baby. And then, woo! Now we're back into the chorus. <laughs> Don't want to go too far, just to take it slow. But no one should be lonely, I shouldn't be lonely. Repeat the chorus. D, A, one, two, three, four, G. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. D, one, two, three, four, A, two, three, B minor. G is that cool lick on A. 
Ah, you went to the E minor catcher. This is how you catch out. It, gets, it changes. We keep changing everything. At, at this section, on this particular chorus, we do that little... Earlier, that's what we played. On this one, because it's the end of the song, it goes... to the G. <laughs> and then you're on the outro riff, which is what you played at the beginning. That or the single finger. <laughs> Something like that. All right, now let's try and put it all together in sequence slowly. You remember all these pieces. It was the intro, which was... That's the gist of that, right? Or have you feel comfortable playing it? Next is the verse, then the pre-chorus, then the chorus. You got your intro again, then a verse. We have a pre-chorus, and then we have another chorus, of course, the bridge, and then the bridge takes us to a solo. After the solo, we have the little pre-chorus, chorus and out we go with the same intro we started the song that very signature riff let's get through it hey everyone this is kiss a girl style but the night is young and it's been a while and she broke my heart broke it right in two and it took some time but i'm feeling like i Such a simple thing Do you wanna try?
go kiss her. <laughs> 